Welcome to the course Investment. My name is Michael Ebbing, and we are covering in this course now the fundamentals of investment, investing in common stocks and preferred stocks. We're covering the investments in fixed income securities as much as in derivatives. Then we're covering the mutual funds and the exchange traded funds, and we're talking about the investments of real estate. Let's start with the fundamentals of investing. The goal of investing is to grow your money. So you invest money today and you want to have this money growing in the future. Mainly we're talking about long-term financial goals rather than short-term. So we're not talking about speculation rather than investing long-term. An investment itself is an asset into which we put our money into it. So we place the funds with the expectation that we are generating some returns out of this. The combination of more investments are called an, a portfolio. I like combine stocks, bonds. I can also put real estate into it. Altogether, this is an, a portfolio. With the uh, portfolio or with any investments, we are expecting certainly returns. Returns are coming then in form of income, typically dividends or interest, or in form of an increase in the value of investments. Normally, we talk about capital gain. I do invest today with $50 and I sell it for $100 later on. We will talk now about the attributes of investments. And at the end, we talk about the investment process. Now let's talk about the different attributes of investments. Starting with what is the difference between a security and a property? A security is an investment which is in general issued by a firm talk about equity securities in form of a stock or debt securities in form of a bond. But certainly also governments can issue securities. Mainly they issue these fixed income securities in form of a bond or NGOs can do this as non-profit organizations or any other organizations which is basically asking for money and giving for that financial claims. A property is a real estate investment normally, or certainly also painting and artwork can also be gold, also something which is physically uh, available. And certainly for that, not as much tradable. Uh, land, buildings, gold, antiquities, and artworks are example for that. The main difference between the securities and the property is liquidity. While securities are very often traded on exchanges, makes them very liquid, though I can buy and sell them relatively easy and relatively fast. Property investments are not as liquid. To sell um, real estate in form of a land or a building is not that easy. So for that, the liquidity of this is relatively low. Buying, selling it is very difficult. Then we talk about the difference between direct and indirect investment. A direct investments, I do invest directly in any kind of securities or property. So I buy directly a stock or buy directly a land or a building or a combination building with land. But I can do this also on indirect way, but this is an indirect investment. In this, I basically hire uh, professional investors or investment managers, and they investing my money into the different assets. Now let's have a look how the distribution of direct stock investments was 2017 by household. And here we see that in general, the 
American, or the United States, always leading these kind of statistics because our Americans are used to invest their money very often into the stock market. They're followed by the Canadian and Australian. And when we compare it for the German or the European countries, we see that only yeah, about half of the household in the European countries are investing in direct stocks compared to the United States. This is historical due to the different character, charisma, mentality between the anglo saxon and the European uh, investors. Now let's continue with the advert of uh, investment. We're talking about now the difference between uh, debt, equity, or derivative security. A debt security is when an investor is lending money to somebody. In general, it is that we are giving money in form of a loan or a bond to a corporation expecting at the return normally interest income. So here the interest income at the return is the major expectation. And certainly we are want to have the money paid back in the future. The equity investment is more an ownership investment. So we're getting the ownership or partial ownership of the company. The return expectation of an equity can be on two sides, either with dividends or with capital gain. The dividends is a continuous payment from the uh, company out of the profit. The capital gain is how the stock behaves on the market. Derivatives are not debt or equities, rather than they're derived from these two assets. So a stock options or an options on interest or a debt side, this would be a derivative. So it's not necessarily a direct investment rather than a derived investment from an underlying asset. Let's talk about the difference between low risk and high risk investments. Risk is certainly always the situation of how is the volatility of my investments, what the value concerns. So the more volatile the uh, value is, the more risky at the end is the investments. So we talk about low risk investments, meaning I do not have this high volatility. I have relatively high insurance that I get my income and my money back. The opposite would be then the high risk, though the predictability of the return or that what I'm getting back is certainly lower. Um, important on the market is the lower the risk of an investment is, the lower is the return expectation. And certainly vice versa. The higher the risk of an investment is, the higher is or must be the return expectation to compensate this risk. To get a return which at the end covers my expectations, we are able to diversify our investment portfolio. Diversification means we are mixing at the end low risk and high risk investments in a portfolio and combining these with a different return expectations, which at the end is something between the low risk and the high risk returns. Now let's have a closer look into the structure of the investment process. Here we need to make the differentiation between the suppliers and the demanders of funds. The suppliers are providing the money which they have to the demanders of these which they need the money. A typical net supplier of funds are the households. So all the households which are earning salaries, wages, 
they are having savings. And these kinds of savings they are interested to invest. Stocks, bonds, real estate. With the financial goal of increasing this money. The typical demanders for this money is are the government. Because they need money for infrastructure, projects, for running the government and so on. And certainly for the businesses, corporations, because we, they do invest into goods, services, long-term investments, machines, and so on. So they need money for that, and this can be provided in form of equity or debt. Then we need to bring the suppliers and demanders together, and for that, we have financial institutions. So the financial institutions basically have the connections to the suppliers and they have the connections to the demanders. Typical banks are very much known for these kinds of financial institutions, but also insurance companies are collecting the premiums from the insured people and these money needs to be invested. So they're basically supplying that at the end to the corporations or the governments. Mutual funds are doing these as well. Another provider of bringing suppliers and demanders together are the financial markets. The financial markets, mainly known as the exchanges, stock exchange, bond exchange, are basically bringing the demand and supplier together so they able to trade the assets between each other. For the financial markets again, we need banks, which are acting as a broker, or we need dealers. When we look at this on the chart, we see on one side the direct transactions. A direct transaction would be that a supplier of funds gives the money to the demander. So rich people, for example, can give a loan to a corporation directly to it. As much as, for example, in the startup area, uh, business angels provide money directly to a new company. The indirect investment certainly is done either then for the suppliers over the financial institutions, because of the financial institutions, the suppliers having their savings, and these savings can be then provided to the corporations or the governments for investment, investing. The suppliers can go directly also over the financial market. As we already heard that the short term is money market and the long term is capital market. And here this will be certainly then uh, provided to the demanders. Again here, the corporations and the government. Now, that financial institutions are helping the suppliers and the demanders to come together over the financial market is the common way today. So the direct way of the suppliers over the financial markets to the demander or over the financial institutions to the demanders is not that often, rather than the financial institutions bringing the money over the financial markets afterwards to the demander. Good. What kind of investors or type of investors are existing? First of all, the individual investors. Individual investors are, at the end, any kind of individual person which is managing his own funds and trying to achieve his returns in the future. And then certainly we have institutional investors. These are investment professionals, mutual funds, for example, but also in the insurance area, we have the institutional investments. And they not are not uh, managing their own money, rather than they managing the pooled money of many people. Certainly with the same goal to increase the return on that. The type of investments we covered already slightly. 
short-term investments, any kind of investments which is maturing or will be repaid in within the last one year. These investments provide a high liquidity because when I get the money back in the next 12 months, I know that it's very shortly and then I can use this money again. Common stocks are a representative of ownership, meaning equity. So we're getting a certain ownership in a corporation. The expectation is that we're getting either an income and or capital gain. So dividends and or capital gains. But here we're going closer into that later on. Fixed income are long-term debt securities. These are mainly issued by corporations and governments. Also here, the return expectations from the investors, individuals or institutionals, are to having a income, which comes mostly with interest. That there are certain forms of fixed incomes. Fixed income securities are in general bonds, which have been a long-term maturity. And they are issued basically by corporations and governments. The idea about investing in bonds is to earn income, which comes mainly with interest income. There are a couple specific ways of bonds, which are called, for example, convertible. This is a specific bond, which gives the right to convert this later on into stocks. All the preferred stocks are called fixed income securities, but they are not debt, they are equity. But they having a fixed dividend, so the return on these preferred stocks is more a fixed income rather than a capital gain. Another important type nowadays uh, in, of investments is mutual funds. Although here we will talk about this much more in deep, but for now a mutual fund is nothing else as a pool where individual or institutional investors placing their money into it and these will be managed by professionals. The professional managers are trying to invest this in a best way of their suppliers of the money to give it or to earn a return on that. The idea about the fund, uh, mutual fund certainly is that if I have only very low money, $1,000, $2,000 for example, it, it's not possible to diversify this money. If I place this money into a mutual fund, I buy basically the diversification of this. And that certainly reduces the risk for my investment. Here we make the differentiation about money market mutual funds. Money market mutual funds are investing in these kinds of securities which are maturing latest in 12 months. Then we have the possibilities to invest this in exchange traded funds. Exchange traded funds are similar like mutual funds but they are basically very often linked to an index, though they are not, not really managed, rather than they are just mirroring a certain index on the stock exchange. Hedge funds are another way of mutual funds. These funds are high risk funds because they are investing in more risky investments, for example, options or futures. They ask him for higher minimum investments and they are less regulated. But always keep in mind they are high risky. Certainly with the expectation that there is a high return at the end. Good. We will talk about derivatives later on. We already know that derivatives are not really assets rather than derived by an underlying asset. These kinds of assets are general stocks or bonds. 
and we are able to invest in these to maximize our profit. Typical derivatives are options. The options are giving me the right to buy or to sell an asset as a specific price, which is given with the option, over a limited of time. More to this when we cover the derivatives individually. A future, the opposite, is a binding contract, which also here gives the seller or the buyer the possibility to deliver an asset for a specific price within a specific date. Keeping in mind here, the major difference is between the options and the futures. With the options, I have the right. With the future, I have a binding contract. Good. Then we have the real estate, last but not least. The real estate is an investment into residential homes, into land, into any kind of a property which is commercial property, warehouses, office, production, and so on. The idea about the investment is to earn certainly rent income, tax write-off possibilities are uh, important, and especially in Europe and in Germany, the capital gain is something which is expected with these kinds of investments. Good. Now we covered a little bit the fundamental of investments. So at the end, you have a little bit of an understanding, the term of investments and the different attributes uh, of investments. So how we distinguish these investments. We can describe the investment process a little bit, what the idea of our financial institutions are, what the idea of the financial market is, and the different types of investments. The next topic will be now then the investing in common and preferred stocks.